Uh, joining us now from Capitol Hill, member of the House Republican leadership, Congressman Tom Cole. Tom Cole, we were just talking about what Hillary Clinton could do to win. It looks like some of your compatriots on Capitol Hill are already ahead of us. They're doing it. A government <laughs> shutdown. Thank just, you. Just what the well, doctor ordered. It's uh, the most important thing that happens in the presidential race really happens on Capitol Hill between now and the end of the year because shutting down the government is a good way to make sure no Republican's going to win the presidency <laughs> in 2016. Well, so so we've done this before. It did not work out well. Uh, Republican approval ratings collapsed, and actually, Tea Partiers that took it as a sign of victory after 2014 didn't look at the nominees because the, all the Republican nominees were more mainstream after that little exercise. So. Well, and people forget about the rollout of Obamacare. That's what saved the Republicans. I mean, uh, our disaster was followed by a bigger disaster by the administration, and I wouldn't count on being that lucky twice. Yeah, so let's talk about John Boehner. We've heard uh, several reports that Speaker Boehner is in trouble. He's not seen as being conservative enough, and, uh, and a lot of conservatives are starting to say on the Hill that if he backs down in the Planned Parenthood fight, that will be the last straw. What well, can you these, tell us? These really aren't fights over who's conservative. John Boehner had the eighth most conservative voting record in the House uh, until he was Speaker, in which case you don't vote anymore. Uh, so he's plenty conservative enough. This is a, a debate over tactics, and we've got some people that want to continue to pursue tactics that have proven they're ineffective. I mean, uh, look, I'm 100% pro-lifer. I believe very strong in that, and I defunded in, in my bill, the Labor H bill, which actually is where the money goes to health and human services on, on that they then turn around and give to Planned Parenthood. We took all that money out in the bill, already passed it through uh, Appropriations Committee long before this particular fight. So, but shutting down the government is just a proved uh, failing strategy. So why in the world would you repeat that? Congressman, it's Willie Geis, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has essentially taken your point of view. He says, look, I don't like Planned Parenthood either, but we're not shutting down the government over it. The only way to get that done is to have a president with a different point of view, so let's think about 2016. Is there an actual chance the government is shut down, or is this just a small few loud voices getting a lot of attention right now? Well, I, I think it's a few loud voices, but I also think, uh, you know, people like this can create opportunities for mischief by the Democrats. I mean, the reality is if the Democrats stay united, a divided majority in power a uh, united minority and uh, so these folks that uh, are willing to shut down a government uh, over an issue which by the way most of them weren't going to probably vote for the continuing resolution anyway I think are just adapt ad adopting the wrong tactics I, I agree with them on the end they're trying to reach but frankly in this case leader McConnell's right you get a president that appoints a secretary of health and human services that's pro-life and that puts people in that are administering Medicaid that are pro-life then you end the problem short of that it's very difficult for Congress uh, by itself to eliminate the grant making authority of, of the Department of Health and Human Services. John Heilman. Congressman, I just want to come back to Speaker Boehner. I mean, I know you, you just you made a point a second ago about this not being about conservatism and about being ta ta all about tactics. He did face an insurrection not that long ago that really did threaten his speakership and it seems as though there's some prospect that that insurrection could recur and be larger because some of the issues on the table if you were him what would you be doing right now to maintain your hold on the speakership well i think he's doing that frankly i think he's showing he's tactically flexible uh, he made some uh, some changes on our iranian, stra iranian strategy last week look he is exceptionally popular amongst rank and file members and uh, you know anytime he's had a vote he's won it overwhelmingly i think he'll do that again if people are foolish enough to precipitate it uh, but frankly he tries to keep his conference together i would have frankly had this uh, vote on the meadows resolutions if i'd had my way back in the summer we could have either killed it in rules committee or if they're serious about bringing it up, file a privileged resolution, bring it to the floor, and let's see how strong you really are. And I noticed uh, most of these folks have backed off from doing that. Hey, Tom, Harold Ford, real quick, what, what are your colleagues who look at the facts and see that when, you, when the government shut down the past, that Republicans have been blamed and it's hurt them, how do they react to that when you say to them, this is not going to defund Planned Parenthood, in fact, it's only going to worsen and as a Democrat, again, I, I see an opening for Hillary Clinton here, but what do they say when you make the case that you've made this morning? 
I'd say well over 200 of them agree, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, most folks know what we did in October of 2013 was a failure. It was a mistake. It was overreach. If we do something like that again, and we've got a couple of opportunities, you know, you've got to uh, get a uh, continuing resolution by the end of this month and then a negotiation and, frankly, hopefully a deal by the 1st of January. So those are the two things we need to focus on. Uh, if we fail in either of those objectives, frankly, I think we materially undermine our chances of winning uh, the White House uh, in, in November of 2016, no matter who our nominee is. Congressman Cole, before we let you go, new polls out this morning. Donald Trump up almost 30 points in New Hampshire. He's winning South Carolina. He's winning Iowa. Have you come to terms with the idea that Donald Trump could be your party's nominee for president? You know, I really don't worry about who the nominee is. I, I have really? a lot of confidence. I don't. I have a lot of confidence in Republican primary voters. I've never lost a primary. I've been in a lot of primaries. I think in the end they tend, like Democrats, quite frankly, to pick the best candidate they have. So we'll just let this thing play out. There's a long way to go. And uh, at the end of the day, they'll make a good choice. They always do. And you'll be good if that choice is Donald Trump? Well, I'll wait and see what the choice is, but uh, I suspect they'll make a very good choice. Okay. Well, he's, he's, he said he's That's fine. A he said he's fine. No With anybody. With, said, whoever it is. Yeah, we shall say. All right. Tom Cole, thank you so good much. Good luck. Thank you. you. Good luck on that's that so hill. Nice. Hey, right. Boomer Sooner. Yeah, you see, Boomer Sooner. What you see you? Tuesday night what or Saturday night? Yeah. yeah. Man, what and a... Dallas last night. So go hey, Cowboys. Big, Had a good weekend. Big win against the Volunteers, Harold Ford. Terrible win. <laughs> Terrible win. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Thank you. Stay